excited for this. Nine games of absolute beautiful stuff that we are ready to witness. Lytical, I don't know about you, but I am ready. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're ready as well because it is time. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Golden League Grand Finals. This is a best of nine between two of the world's best players. Apparently, according to our UI, we've got two Beastie Cuties, and that is how you know he's just on that next level. The double Beastie Cutie matchup. <laughs> it's because he's we'll C2, that right? <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's exactly it. We will get this fixed up, don't worry. But I can assure you, there you go. Izzy Marine Lord is going to be our second player. Beastie Cutie, our first player. And let's let's take a look at these spawns. So spawning in on the south side in the colour blue, playing as the Mongols, we've got Beastie Cutie. And on the northern side of the map, a somewhat surprising civilization pick to start the set with. It is Marine Lord playing as the Abbasid Dynasty in red. And we talked about this very briefly in the pregame, that... Beast is coming in here, guns blazing. Potentially his best civilization, the Mongols, is being brought in here. Whereas for Marine Lord, he is using the Abbasids, one of his lesser used civilizations. But we do have to keep in mind, this is a best of nine. Which means that you're going to have to use most of your civilizations. In fact, um, now you might be wondering back at home, hey, this is a best of nine. We only have eight civilizations in the game. What happens after game number eight? And, well... We got an answer for you for that one. So the way that this is going to work is that in the first eight games, of course, in the case that we go for the eight games, the players will be using one civilization in one game each, and they can't reuse a civilization. So standard civilization picking rules. And in game number nine, we are going back to Dry Arabia, and the players can choose any civilization that they want. So you have to be very considerate of how you distribute your civilizations here, because it's very possible that you will need to have... Uh, eight civilizations while you will need to play all eight civilizations that we have in the game. Now let's talk about something else a little bit strange. Obviously having nine civilizations, well, it's something we don't quite have yet. We've only got eight, so we're going to have to run that extra crazy ninth game. But take a look over in the base of Beastie Cutie right now. We are seeing a stable coming down as his very first production building. And this is very, very strange. This was something that you might have been, if you played Age of Empires 4 back in the beta, then this was something that you would have been happy to do. But things changed a lot. People started moving towards the barracks and gravitating towards that direction. But here we see a stable coming out. What kind of options does that enable him to have, Litter? Well, the first thing, as you pointed out, is that the stable has sort of gone out of meta for a while. Mongo Tower Rush has taken over with the Spearmen. So there is definitely some element of surprise, especially given how compact Beast this base is. You see, that stable is right next to the town center. There's a chance that Marine Lord, being afraid of the town center, might not even scout it. And there is that element of surprise that you can use to hit the gold miners. And what's more important is that you could be the one dictating the game. Because, as you see, there's a villager moving forward as well for a Tower Rush. And you will force your opponent to go for archers. And that sets you up as the tempo setter of the game. You're going to have the mobility advantage and you're just going to continue on from that point on, depending on how successful your tower rush is. And there's no surprise to see a tower rush coming out from Beastie Cutie today. As you know, I am the ambassador of Chicken Wings. He is the ambassador of tower rushes. He loves the tower rushes. Every single game he plays the Mongols, he pulls out the tower rush and it's no surprise. Sometimes it comes out at like five minutes, five minutes, 30, six minutes sometimes, not really a rush. This game, it is going to be before four minutes. And uh, and it seems at this point, Marine Lord is absolutely unaware. Now going to be heading out onto the map, scouting out. And I guess one of the, the reasons why you typically expect him to be aware is because that, that scout would be there harassing the villager, trying to cause early damage, but he's not doing it. In fact, he's just just chilling out, just having a good little time. And if you look at Marine Lord's gold count right now, he's at sitting at 81, which means that he won't have enough gold to go for the fresh foodstuffs upgrade. And this is what you're getting with the horsemen. You reach the enemy base a lot sooner than you would if you would be using the spearmen. So you can push away the Abbasid player from gold a little sooner. So you can't even get that very essential upgrade, fresh foodstuffs, which cuts your villager price into half, let alone going for wheelbarrows. So you are severely impacting the Abbasid eco with this first few horsemen that are coming out here for Beastie. Spearmen now making their way out onto the field. Marine Lord has hit that second age. We see the new age has begun. He's got enough gold in the bank if he wants to get that upgrade to improve those spearmen all the way up to hardened because now that he's reached the feudal age, he'll have access to that second level of, of unit. But uh, we can see that he's not researching it at the moment, really wants to just focus in on that fresh foodstuffs and reduce the cost of his villagers down. 
Beastie Cutie on the backside is now working towards gold. And look at Beastie just being so damn annoying on this gold mine, still preventing Marine Lord from having enough gold to get that fresh foodstuffs out. This is causing him a lot of havoc in this early stage of the game. Yeah, that's exactly it. You are the tempo setter right now. If you're Beastie, you're pushing away your opponent from that gold. And keep in mind that the Abbasids, they usually like to play two town centers here. So the ideal build for Marine Lord would be to grab the gold, fresh foodstuffs, then have enough gold for Wheelbarrow, and then transition to stone. And he's nowhere close to that. In fact, if you look at Marine Lord's eco balance, he already has the wood he needs for that second town center, but he simply can't access stone because of the presence of those horsemen. His early game build order is being torn to shreds by this aggression by Beastie. Yeah, this is absolutely huge. And you can see he's managed to get enough gold now for that fresh food stuff, researching it through. And a battering ram is now coming out for Marine Lord. I can't believe that I'm seeing this. We're seeing a battering ram. There's no way he's doing a battering ram this early. We're six minutes into this game. He needs to deal with those towers, but that's a big investment right now. You're going to invest 300 wood into taking those towers down, and this is just helping Beastie so much more, because that battering gram after that is pretty much going to be a non-factor. So you're forcing a ton of investment here from Marine Lord by doing these towers, and this essentially allows you to have complete map control and just do whatever you want, really. If you're Beastie, you're also setting that mining camp on fire now, so you're going to get the bounty here if you're Beastie. And this position looks very convincing right now for our blue player. Yeah, and we see additional outposts coming up. This is one of the things that Beastie Cutie is famous for doing. He invests his wood into these future outposts that are going to be successful in maybe five, 10 minutes. And right now there's going to be an outpost that is going up over towards the west of where this villager currently is. So you'll see that there's an outpost on our screen, but over towards that secondary wood line, he's already got an outpost that is completed, ready to roll in case the uh, Marine Lord looks to transfer those villages over there. You can see it just chilling out. And he, as long as he's got line of sight on those villages, it will be able to dish out plenty of damage there. Super smart moving out that attack speed. Arrow going to be coming off, looking to try and dish out damage over on that, that Spearman. But obviously the Spearman very steadfast and strong in that corner. Not going to be difficult to deal with until it comes out of the pocket. And then all of a sudden going to be poking its way through. A whole mass more of Spearman going to be able to push back this villager, force them away. And now the... Uh, looks like the the uh, the horseman going to be heading up towards that northern side, looking to try and dish out damage to that ram. But uh, it, it seems at this point in time that the push has stalled out. The push has stalled out, but Beast is still benefited from this greatly because right now, if you look at Marine Lord's base, it is a big, big mess right now, and he's yet to clean up those towers. Now, Beastie probably hasn't spotted that ram for a while, so that's why he went for the arrow slits on those towers, despite the fact that there is a higher probability of him losing this. And look at that. Nice little move from Marine Lord garrisoning the spearmen inside the battering ram to make sure the tower can't kill them. The moment they jump out, Beastie is going to refocus. And now the villager finding a wolf over there, but as you pointed out, Beastie is setting himself up long term with those towers, making sure that it is as difficult for Marine Lord to clean this up as humanly possible. Yeah, fortunately for Marine Lord, that wolf did land quite a hand. And unfortunately, that outpost is going to go down. We can see the scout coming up towards this northern position. Looking to try and take out that villager. But unfortunately, it's outnumbered by the horsemen that are there. The scout uh, is successful in its mission to kill that villager and makes its way out alive. Now we see that Marine Lord is beginning to add in camels. We've got archers as well. And things are going well for Marine Lord at this point in time. Let's check on the base of Beastie. I want to see exactly what he's up to over there. Whether we've got pastures coming down, what we're going on, or what we're actually up to. We do indeed have three pastures coming out already for him. Now looking to drop an outpost down on the gold, making his way up towards that castle age. Still got quite a while though before he gets there. Yeah, he has to be careful though, because right now his only military on the battlefield is just the horsemen and Beastie, or a Marine Lord rather, does have camel archers, he does have some spearmen, and Abbasids can make siege weapons right away. This gold mine is dangerously exposed. If Marine Lord decides to go aggressive over here, pressure that gold mine, he could easily punish Beastie for a fast castle here, but instead, Marine Lord decides to clean up the towers on that second forest and work his way towards the second town center. This could be good for Beastie because this is usually how Beastie loves to play the Mongols. Go for that semi-fast castle approach, pick up the relics and after that build your second town center. You won't be falling behind that much in villager numbers, but you will be set up long term with three, four, potentially five relics in the bank. Beastie now looking to try and turn the attention towards the enemy's side. We did see that camel come out and try and 
take out some villagers, but fortunately there was enough horsemen there to deal with it. Get sniped out by the Khan. The battering rams also cleaned up the majority of the outposts over on his enemy side of the map. If we can take a look at Beastie's perspective, I'd love to see what his line of sight looks like because typically at this point, Beastie, he would be sitting very happily with just plenty of outposts around the enemy base, but you can see there's absolutely nothing right now. The only thing he's got in regard to to any form of line of sight is that Khan that is just actively over on the enemy side. So Marine Lord's done a great job in this early stage of the game to prevent that aggression from lasting because so typically you would expect to see Springholds coming out with their emplacements, but it's not going to be the case today. Yeah, indeed, it's a great move from Marine Lord and he secures the northern side of the map with that. The northern side that has two berry patches out there, so it's immensely valuable for the Abbasid player. Beastie still has some horsemen in here, looping around trying to find some straggler villagers, but ultimately his long-term goal is to go into Castle Age, but wait a second, he finds the gold mine over here. Bit of a pedestrian reaction actually from Marine Lord, hello? Marine Lord seems to have fallen asleep at the keyboard. Not the best reaction times right now. I do assure you guys, this guy is considered by many to be a number one player. But unfortunately, what, what's going on with Marine Lord now? Finally reacting to this raid. He's lost a ha huge amount of villagers here, Ludicor. And that's the effect of those towers and the con. You get immune to the attack notifications out there. That con has been shooting the villagers on the wood line for a long, long time. And Marine Lord just ignores the attack notifications because he says, oh, it's only the con. It's not going to kill my villagers. And by the time he notices that this attack notification belongs to something else, he loses a ton of villagers. He's on two town centers, but only two villagers ahead compared to Beastie. Great raid by Beastie. And now he's on the way to Castle Age. Oh, my Lord. If I'm a Rain Lord right now, I'm... Well, I'm probably just waking up, uh, but uh, I'd, I'd also be a little bit upset with myself, a little bit disappointed. But uh, I mean, one of the things that you mentioned earlier, and I want to point this out, what a beautiful spawn Marine Lord's got this game for the Abbasid Dynasty. Double berries on the back. This is such a great spawn because sometimes you do get berries that spawn towards the front. We can see the Beastie's actually got a, a berry spawn towards the front, but Marine Lord gets a double back berries. This is insane stuff for the Abbasid. He's going to be super happy with this, and it guarantees his food income for at least the next four or five minutes. It's a very nice spawn, we can say that for sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let it call. What are we going to uh, do with you? What are we going to do with you? Yeah. Beastie Anyways. now up to the, the Castle Age. Marine Lord going up as well. Uh, that is uh, that is great. Uh, Battering Ram <laughs> just chilling out in the base for Marine Lord at the moment. Now, one of the things that you mentioned is that Marine Lord has obviously started working on that villager lead. So I suspect from here the plan for Beastie is going to be to look to drop down a monastery begin taking control of the relics. And then once he's established at least four out of the five relics, that's where he's going to start working towards that second town center, making sure to drop down a market and trade out all that extra gold that he's gotten from the step right out. Yeah, that's exactly it. That is a very classic style approach by Beastie. And once he has that set up, he's going to start his slow tower crawl, make sure that he has outposts all across the map for vision, for spring old emplacements. And from that point on, he's just going to be sitting back waiting, essentially waiting for Marine Lord to push because he knows that he is going to be set up with four or five relics. And the prayer tent is already out. Not a single relic garrison for him just yet. Whereas for Marine Lord, he's already on the way to Castle Agent. He's got a tremendous resource bank. Look at that, 1,000 food and 900 gold, while also already aging up. What is he going to do with so many resources when hitting Castle Age? Yeah, this is a good question. Obviously, he's got a lot of upgrades that he wants to get upon aging up. And going up with the Culture Wing is going to mean he has that access to preservation of knowledge, which has been recently buffed for the Abbasid Dynasty. So definitely something that he is going to be looking to, to bring into play. But you're, you're definitely right. There is a huge amount of resources chilling out for Marine Lord. Def a, a bit curious. Marine Lord definitely seems to be a bit sloppy today, doesn't he? I mean, he was definitely surprised by this one, but hello, there are knights once again moving in. And indeed, Marine Lord losing so many villagers once again. Beastie is definitely feeling a lot more confident in this game number one. Yeah, this is this is looking tough for, for Marine Lord. He's got the villager lead, but now the relics are going to start working their way towards Beastie's side. Keep in mind that each player spawns with a safe relic, and then there's three contested relics in the middle. Uh, Marine Lord has walled out that safe relic, though, so there is the potential for five relics to go over towards his enemy. But now those lancers continuing to apply pressure up towards his second town center. We saw them come in a little bit earlier and take out villagers. Now they're going to be able to take out down that spearman. More lancers running in on the wood line, and Marine Lord just getting absolutely run around right now. Yeah, his base has more holes than Swiss cheese. He's trying to wall off the left side, but those Lancers are just tearing him apart right now. And it doesn't matter that you have a villager lead if half of your eco is idle, but 
Holy smokes, he's only seven villagers ahead compared to Beastie, and Beastie is working his way towards all those relics. Multiple barracks being added here. It's going to be a grand total of four barracks by Marine Lord. Holy spearmen. The amount of spears that we're going to see here is gonna be brutal. Beastie doesn't have any units that can fight them off right now, and that could be concerning, but it's also a very heavy commitment to just one type of unit here by Marine Lord. Wallalol in the middle now, gonna be popping off, trying to take control of those spearmen. Fortunately, Marine Lord is paying attention, does get away safely from there, and pops the relic holding Monk inside that outpost to keep it safe a little bit longer. Very smart move from him. Now we can see that those spearmen are going to be turning their attention towards those those lancers. Uh, but at the same time, the sprinkled emplacement has come through on that outpost. It's going to be able to hold that position down very healthily. But it uh, looks like Beastie might have fallen asleep now at the keyboard. Fortunately, Marine Lord wasn't paying attention, unable to really get any good, decent stabs off there. Let's check in over on... Oh, 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 oh no! Oh, the second time in the game! The second time that wolf is coming in to help out Marine Lord. This is only meant to be a 1v1, but it seems it's a 2v1 at the moment, the way Gaia is treating Beastie. At least the deer aren't attacking his villagers yet, so there's a positive about that one. But there we go, second town center for Beastie. If you took a page out of Beastie's textbook of how to play Mongols, this is exactly the page that you would take out. Early aggression with towers, into fast castle relics and then a second town center starting that slow tower creep right after that with the spring golden placements this is so far a textbook game by beastie whereas for marine lord he's struggling to hold these raids from marine lord's perspective ideally you'd like to be up by about 20 villages at this point at the very least and the problem is now that beastie has got that second town center up it means that all that he remains ahead is eight villagers. For the rest of the game, you can assume that it's not gonna grow any bigger than that because Marine Lord's gonna have that aggression on his side as well. Now there's and a couple units in the middle. Oh yeah, go on, go on. And Beastie has the Lancers, right? Marine Lord's army is not capable of dealing any damage to Beastie's eco, whereas for Beastie, he can just keep raiding and raiding and that's exactly what he's doing, just looping around with the Lancers. So Marine Lord, it is the best case scenario for him to maintain that villager lead. The worst case scenario is that he's soon going to start falling behind. And that's exactly it. And keep in mind, there's also relics that are out on the map at the moment. Beastie currently sitting with one in possession, but three on the way back towards his base. And that fifth and final relic, remember how I said there were three contested relics and two safe relics, one for each player? That final relic is the safe relic for Beastie. The confidence level of Beastie is crazy here, by the way. He's fully aware of his position. He knows very well that he doesn't have to take that safe relic right now. He can just go for the more exposed ones. He's going a little greedy with those relics, but he understands that Marine Lord is in such a tough position that he simply can't contest those more exposed relics. So he can wait with the safe relic, just go for those more exposed ones, as the Lancers are once again causing so much trouble for Marine Lord here. Villager difference down to four now, down to three as those villagers continue dying over on that wood line. He's just taking them out left, right, and center. And now two villager difference between these two players. Keep in mind, Beastie's got five relics now in his possession. He is looking very happy, very healthy as he continues harassing his enemy at this point. And Marine Lord, he's, he's struggling. He is struggling to say the least. Yeah, he's struggling pretty badly over here. Another couple of villagers getting intercepted on those berries. Beastie is going to lose some Lancers to the crossbows here. But now look at the villager count. It's essentially even between the two players and Beastie is sitting on five relics. From this point on, all he needs to do is just keep spamming towers, sit back and wait for his opponent to come to him. Because every single element of the game is in the favor of Beastie right now. By the way, he's dropping a siege workshop with Mongols, which is a little uncharacteristic instead of going for improved siege engineering, but it also signals something very important. He decides to bail the siege on the siege workshop and spend all of his stone on weapon emplacements. He doesn't want to spend his stone on double training or improved upgrades. All goes into weapon emplacements. Yeah, very smart move there from him. Obviously, as the Mongols, you don't have the ability to mine stone. You don't have the ability to trade for it. There is no way that you can gain it other than having that Uvu. And the only way that you can get emplacements, especially those expensive Springle emplacements, is with stone. So it means that there is, a, is technically a limit on how much you can actually have in that regard. But now we've got ourselves a little bit of a counter push coming out. The first time Marine Lord ever looks to put some pressure on his enemy. We did see that Camel Archer come in earlier in the game. But now it seems that Marine Lord's found a little bit of a spine and he's looking to try and push out off it towards that enemy base. The barracks did get picked off over here. And you see, as you pack up your buildings, you essentially remove all the armor from them. So the barracks got destroyed very easily. And look at that. The prayer tent is now under attack. All five relics could be gone in the blink of an eye here for Beastie. 
Yeah, he needs to pick this up and pull it back really quickly. You can see he's fortunately got plenty of archers in here. Brantan going to be able to make it out safe. And those Mongol outposts, or rather those Mongol uh, those Mongol race cars, just zoom on out of here. They, they are so damn quick, aren't they? Yeah, if you get the upgrade for them, they're really quick. But you know what else is quick? The death of your archers if they eat some mangonel shots, because that's exactly what's happening. Beautiful hit by Marine Lord on that group of archers. Yeah, that was a lot of damage that came out. The other thing to note as well, that Marine Lord tried, or rather Beastie, tried to, to save that single Springled. Marine Lord saw it, and so he made sure that his Springled's fire at the exact same time, so it meant that there was no window for Beastie to actually repair that unit up. But a beautiful little raid coming in over on the south side. Marine Lord looking to turn the tables. He's found himself a 10 villager lead right now. He's taken out quite a few of Beastie's villagers. Yeah, quite a few villagers got taken down over here. And keep in mind, Marine Lord does have a pretty respectable resource bank as well. So there is more where this came from. Beastie being cut off from gold a tiny bit over here, if you exclude the fact that he's got five relics and getting pushed a little bit under his second town center here. Towers and the Spring Olds, supported by the archers and crossbows, should be able to hold this one though. But Marine Lord definitely buying himself a lot of precious time over here. And he's in the middle of that farm transition. So once he completes that, he could renew these assaults and we could be looking into a very even game here that has a high possibility of going into Imperial. Yeah, that's definitely the case. Now, I, I just want to mention, I, I love the way that Marine Lord is adapting here. We saw just three spearmen in the base just building a random ram. And you might think that it's random. I might have said that it's random, but that is not the case. There is an intent behind that ram. There are outposts that are dotted all around this map. And Marine Lord is intent on cleaning them up, as well as cleaning up this little bit of a raid down here like BC is as well. It's a very nice idea by Marine Lord over here. He needs to make sure that those towers aren't creeping up on his base because it's one thing that those will have the spring golden placements. So wherever you go, you're being shot at, but it's also the information factor for Beastie. And the players at the highest level understand that information is insanely valuable. If I know that you're chopping wood there, I will send two Lancers and you lost 15 villagers. So denying that information from Beastie is also a key element of this game here for Marine Lord. And he's accomplishing that by taking down those towers with that battering ram. We now see a third town center coming up for Marine Lord as well. He is taking that out over on the deer hunt towards the east of his base. So really looking to solidify his economy and make sure that he is in a strong position in that late game. A great timing window for him here, finding this because he's obviously looking to transition towards farms. And so instead of building up an extra 10 farms that might cost you 750 wood, he just throws 10 villages on deer, which he doesn't have to pay for. Well, I mean, you got to pay for the town center, but it all works out. And that food is going to be turned into even more villagers because we could see for a brief moment that Marine Lord is adding town center number three. He saw the town center from Beastie, so he's realizing that he cannot build up a villager lead like this. So he's going to add a third one, making sure that he has a chance to build up a villager lead. Little does he know that all the raids that he has done actually accomplished quite a lot. 14 villagers lead now for him and an attempt from Beastie to go for a somewhat ambitious tower out there. Yeah, he is known for these kind of crazy towers, isn't he? Just, I, I love the way that Marine Lord's assigned a single villager to kill that that uh, that villager building the outpost as well. He's like, eh, I've done the math. This <laughs> this villager will be dead by, by the time that outpost comes up, so I am fine. Uh, but uh, now we've got ourselves quite a bit of a mass building up in the middle of the map. Marine Lord's got to be careful as all of that siege actually goes idle. He's not paying attention and he does potentially lose this out. The Manganel goes down. The Springles continue chasing in tow. There's two more Springles here. It could be an expensive engagement and indeed it is as the second one goes down for him. Things not looking good for Marine Lord right now. Tremendous losses out there. And while he was distracted, the Lancers are pushing his gold mine. Things could fall apart really fast over here for Marine Lord because suddenly he finds himself exposed at multiple locations. And there is a likely chance that he isn't even going to notice those Lancers killing his gold miners because he's busy microing this fight, trying to make sure he doesn't lose that last Springgold. Wait, there's Lancers killing my gold miners again? No, no, not again. <laughs> it has been a reoccurring theme this game. Beastie just manages to sneak a couple of units into the base of Marine Lord, and he doesn't notice and loses a whole bunch of villagers. And now we continue to see them just being harassed on that gold mine. Hopefully Marine Lord is sending some units up there to clear that out. We'll check in with him shortly. But Beastie looking very strong in this late game. He's looking very strong. And I mean, Beastie and late game is probably the biggest love stories of Age Vampires 4. It, he's unbelievable when it comes to late game. There are just no words for that. His perception of uh, how to play the game in the long scenarios, no matter the Civ matchup, no matter the map, is, I think, one of its kind. So 
For Marine Lord, you don't want to enter that 45 minute plus domain because that is beastly territory with capital letters. And that's exactly it. Like, typically, when you think about Marine Lord, you think of him as this methodical player, doesn't make a lot of mistakes, waits for his enemy to make a mistake, and then capitalizes on it. Beastie, on the other hand, he's methodical, but he loves to delay those games. He's happy to take poor trades in the early game if it means that he can solidify his position in the late game. But now we've got ourselves a bit of a battle beginning to break out. Plenty of archers on the backside here. Beastie Cutie going to be trying to hold on as the villagers get pulled from Marine Lord. He's looking to try and take out all the Springwoods here. There are so many Springwoods here for him and now those crossbows going to continue pushing up on the backside village is really getting intent look at the torches coming out right now Lidicor. yeah he's focusing down those expensive springles and love how he's moving up with his army he's understanding that he can win that fight and he's cutting off the retreat path he's wiping up the floor with beastie's army over here beastie went from 17 military population to just 30 in a blink of an eye beautiful surrounding there and suddenly marine lord's army is looking a lot scarier than what it used to look like a minute ago now dropping a keep in that middle area as well solidifying control over that central sacred site actually cancels it upon seeing the spring golden placement placed on that tower you can't help but feel that that excess amount of springwoods that came down for beastie lent to that outcome because when you invest in a springwood what are you investing in you're investing in a siege unit that counters other siege units and when marine lord only makes a single mangonel and that mangonel dies before that engagement even begins then what purpose do those springwoods actually serve and right there we witnessed it they got completely eaten alive beastie spent probably close to I'm, I'm just doing some quick math here 4,000 resources on those springles and that 4,000 resource it could have been on men at arms it could have been on lances it could have been on horsemen archers spearmen anything but unfortunately it was on springles and it meant he got absolutely whopped Beastie was probably expecting way more mangonels here from Marine Lord, and that's not a terrible idea if you think about that. Abbasids, they love to build their siege on the battlefield, so Beastie was probably like, hey, there's a bunch of infantry coming my way from the Abbasids, they're likely going to employ like three, four, five mangonels, I need a lot of springles. And he probably himself was very surprised about the fact that Marine Lord is not using a single mangonel over here, in fact, the only non-human component of his army is just one traction trebuchet and one battering ram, the rest of it is all infantry. Yeah, now continuing to push forward. We see those sacred sites being neutralized slowly. A couple of mangonels now coming out for Beastie Cutie, looking to really live up to that name, CG Cutie. It is something that we see out of him quite a fair bit, uh, but he's going to continue adding in more siege behind this. We see Springwood's coming out for both players now, and a lot of men at arms in queue for Marine Lord. Yeah, once you have the mangonels on the battlefield, Marine Lord can't neglect that. Marine Lord has to add his own springles, and that's where those springles that Beastie has come into play. They could snipe down the ones coming from Marine Lord. 14 Lancer is also in the army of Beastie, so he does have a tremendous amount of mobility with those, and he could use those for raiding. As we do see Marine Lord getting close to pop cap, so with him being pop capped, he could start thinking about going into Imperial. Beastie, on the other hand, getting close to pop cap as well, but his food count isn't looking spectacular by any means. Yeah, it's something that we've yet to really see for him, bringing out, you know, that huge investment in food. But another bit of a raid coming down. Beastie going to be falling back towards that town center. That would like getting raided by just a handful of spears. <laughs> you know, in that previous series between uh, the Viper and Puppy Paw, we saw a, a raid coming out with elephants. Now we get to see a spearman raid coming out. So it just seems to be a kind of, you know, a kind of day where anyone is happy to throw out any single unit. Anyone that volunteers for a raid, you are welcome to come. Indeed, any kind of damage that you can do on the eco is value, and those spearmen are rather cheap, they might not matter much in a direct battle, but they could mean a lot if you can kill a couple of villagers with them. But it looks like now Beastie is pushing up this front line over here, Springles are moving up, but where are the mangonels? Where are the mangonels here for Beastie? They are missing from the battlefield, and that could be a terrible scenario for him, although not a lot of crossbows in that army for Marine Lord, and those lancers could easily overpower the archers. Yeah, things are starting to look bad for Marine Lord. The, the count on military is starting to look even better for Beastie. He continues to push towards his enemy base. The Lancer number's looking very healthy, very happy right now. A single Spearman comes out, trying to dish out some damage upon those Lancers, but unfortunately the numbers are looking very, very good for Beastie. Three trebuchets on the backside, three mangonels on the front line. There are plenty of units out for him, and Marine Lord is starting to struggle. And this is where those Spearmen could actually come in useful. It's not a problem to send spearmen to raid if you don't need them in your army, but if you need them like this, it's gonna be a terrible scenario, and we could see for a brief moment that most of the spearmen, 17 to be precise, are down to the south for Marine Lord. Those would be so much needed in this battle against those lancers. 
they could still do something over here, I guess, on the Ovu, but there are two Springle Towers. Their impact on the southern part of the map is gonna be much smaller than what it would be if they were here in the base of Marine Lord, because Marine Lord, he will need to take this fight very soon. His buildings are being trapped down. Yeah, it's a really difficult spot for him. There is so much siege coming out from Beastie that uh, ideally for Marine Lord, he just needs to get out a whole bunch of Springles. He's sitting on four at the moment. Those units are making their way back towards the base of Marine Lord. At least uh, they might go on, on a little bit of a raid uh, party before they decide to do that. But Springle trade's coming out. Players trading one for one. Lancer's on the front line. A Mangonel getting itself a little bit caught here, trying to reproduce and make a second Mangonel potentially. <laughs> But unfortunately, it looks like they've pulled themselves out a little bit too early. It's not going to be happening today. And now those mangoes just coming off on the back line. You can see the damage getting thrown down upon those crossbows. Going to be trying to keep themselves alive. But unfortunately, Beastie is still in a great position. Marine Lord simply doesn't have the firepower to engage those mangonels. And you see, here comes Beastie with three more mangonels. He's got a grand total of eight on the battlefield. He's living up to that nickname of him being the Siege Lord, really. And right now, Marine Lord simply has no answer to that. This is such a tough spot for Marine Lord to hold, but if there's any Civ that can do it, it is the Abbasid Dynasty because they have the ability to train those Springles out on the field. He doesn't have to wait for them in the Siege Workshop. He can make it with infantry. But obviously, we can see them doing a little bit of a dance back there. It's going to be on, ba on the basis that you've got enough resources for it. And I'm just having a look at Marine Lord's bank right now. Marine Lord, make more Springles! <laughs> you can afford to make 10 Springles! Get them out there! What are you doing, kid? He has a tremendous resource bank, but he simply can't put units on the battlefield because he's losing production buildings. He does have the infantry to beat, uh, to bring Siege into the battle with. But the problem is that Springles now won't be enough either because suddenly there's a bunch of crossbows rampaging his eco and half of his economy will turn idle in a blink of an eye. Population 200 versus 160 and Beastie is turning on cruise control with that Siege group. Yeah, and this is the timing that he was looking for. He, he goes into that single town center, picks up the five relics, gets out that second town center, and this is the window that he's looking for. This is the window that he hits. It was left open for a little bit too long, and Beastie climbs right through it and says, G'day, mate! How you going? Brings the entire army with him, and now he continues putting that pressure upon his enemy, and he is not letting up the gas right now. So many buildings, buildings being burned down over here, and keep in mind, the Mongol player gets rewarded for every single building set on fire. Just look at the amount of rubble that's in there for Marine Lord's base. That is hundreds of resources falling into the hands of Beastly just from burning down all those buildings, which is just going to strengthen this push even more. And we are reaching that critical mass where Beastly could consider diving the army of Marine Lord. Right now, 85 army versus 55. Springles, however, hitting the field for Marine Lord. If there is a way back into this game, it has to be through those Springles for Marine Lord. Yeah, that is the only way that he's going to be able to really keep himself a a alive or afloat. But the problem is the numbers are starting to stack up for Beastie. Have a look at how much food he's got. Have a look at how much gold he's got. There is the potential for an Imperial to come. And if Imperial comes, it is almost guaranteed that Beastie Cutie's first upgrade that he researches is Roller Shutter Triggers, which changes everything in this dynamic because it means that he wins all of these siege battles by default because he's got that extra two range. I was thinking about Tithe Barns actually as his first upgrade. That would also be a pretty juicy one with five relics in the bank for sure. But instead, he's playing this one safe. I love how Beast is approaching this one. You see, he's not intent on pushing Marine Lord's army. He just wants to make sure he does as much damage as safely as possible. Because as he said, he's waiting for you to make a mistake. He's going into Imperial and he's going to say Mar to, or sell to Marine Lord, hey, you better come out of your base because if you're not coming out, I'll be moving in with an Imperial Age army in a matter of seconds. That's exactly it. He's got more than 20 villagers building that landmark now. It's going to be the white stupa that's coming down because I don't even think he knows the name of the other landmark. <laughs> what is it? The Kaganik Palace or something like that? Yep. There it is in the back of the base, the white stupa coming down. All right. So my, my bet is roller shutter triggers uh, and your bet is tight barns that he goes for first. Let's take a look and see what upgrades we've got coming in from Beastie because there's going to be a lot of them. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready. Here they come. One, two, three, four. I declare a thumb more. There it is. Roller shutter triggers and siege works coming in straight away for Beastie. All right, you win with this one. It's, of course, understandable <laughs> for Beastie to go for all the shirt triggers. It is a massive buff to his Springhold, and suddenly there's going to be no chance for Marine Lord to win those Springhold battles. Also, looks like he's going to have some of the villagers intercepted in the middle. He's still close to 200 population, and his resource bank isn't looking that terrible. He's actually sitting on 5,000 gold. If he balances out his eco, he could go into Imperial himself. But the problem is that Beast is already an imp, and he's grabbing those all-important Imperial Age upgrades, including Elite Lancers and Elite Crossbowmen. 
And this is the timing window that Beastie will be looking for. If he can finish Marine Lord off right now in these next 60 to 90 seconds, it is going to be absolutely perfect for him because Marine Lord, he's going to be going up to that Imperial Age. We see that his numbers are starting to stack up in that top, top left-hand corner of your screen. And he's going to be thinking about the same upgrades that Beastie's thinking about. You know, the, those big upgrades like Roller Shutter Triggers, Siege Works, really important elite upgrades as well. But obviously, it is going to be a, a bit of a, a weight that he's got on his hands because the Abbasid Dynasty unable to rush up any of their age for landmarks because they take a little bit longer through the House of Wisdom, don't they? Yeah, a lot longer, actually. It's 1.45 to wait, and that is a tremendous amount of time in such a game because you simply don't have almost two minutes to wait until your Imperial Age kicks in and then also grab your upgrades. By the way, there is Tithe Barns coming in here for Beastie, so at least I'm happy that he didn't forget that upgrade. It has become more and more popular, but guess what? Here comes the big battle, and Marine Lord, he thinks he needs to fight this one right now. Yeah, he's really intent on pushing out against his opponent. But ideally, this is something that you'd want to wait for. You've waited this long, and now the Magadel's getting off plenty of shots on those archer balls. 164 population for Marine Lord. You can see the clump of archers that are dead on the ground right there. Marine Lord wasting away on the floor. This is not looking pretty for him. He's trying his best to escape and fall back. There's outposts. There's a little bit of long distance mining coming in as well from Beastie on the south side of the map. He's looking a little bit like me right now, i got to be honest, Lidicor. Sometimes I'll forget a lumber camp and... It just feels bad now. Beastie pushing once again very deep into the enemy base over here, going for that last big exposed gold mine. And one thing we haven't talked about is that Marine Lord is completely out of gold. He was amassing a ton of gold because he was mining that large gold mine on the left side as a madman. On the other hand, he depleted all the gold he had access to and suddenly he's reaching Imperial with 2,000 gold in the bank, no more, no less, with no rally gold incoming for him. Vroom Vroom cars are out. Marine Lord with 12 Springlords at the moment compared to Beastie, who's on seven. So that gives him a massive advantage when it comes to these trades. Imperial Age now coming through. We see Roller Shutter Triggers immediately research. We see Elite Spearmen, Elite Archers coming through. He's going for that big mass of trash units because he knows he's got no access to gold. Zero gold a minute right now for the French. But we do see that Marine Lord is slowly but steadily building up over on that western side. I said French, I meant French player, uh, just to avoid any confusion. There are there, There is no French civilization in this game. And good game gets called. Marine Lord says, I'm not even going to play it out. Beastie Cutie just wins. A little bit confused right there. What happened? Why? What? Uh, okay, a little bit weird, but fair enough. Good game. <laughs> I think this may have been the moment where Marine Lord realized that he's completely out of gold and he's just sitting there watching, okay, I'm going to get good spring gold trades here, but Beastie does have access to gold and I don't, and he's sitting on five relics. Like, at this point, even trades are insufficient for Marine Lord and he simply didn't have the army to take non-even trades. And with that, Beastie is just set up so much more long-term and we talked about this one. This is Beastie's real power, setting himself up long-term and then just making sure that he is the one outlasting the opponent. He is going to take a win here with the Mongols and that pushes him to 14 and two win rate in the entire tournament with this civilization. By far his most beloved civilization of all. He brought out the big gun for game number one. Marine Lord went for a bit of more reserved civilization pick, so to say, a civilization that doesn't use that commonly. Beastie, bringing in the big guns, bringing in his favorite civilization, takes game number one. Impressive stuff there from Beastie. We'll be heading into game number two shortly. So do not go anywhere if you are planning to get something to drink now. It's probably a good time if you're wanting something to eat. Well, you're going to have to wait for this best of nine to end because we are going to be here all damn day and we are going to be enjoying the heck out of this. 